One of the questions I hear a lot, both in person and on social media, is why is there a diesel locomotive behind the steam engine? Well, there can actually be several different answers for that question. So what I'm going to do here is address a few of those answers by looking at several situations I'm familiar with. Let's start with the Union Pacific. They've created a lot of attention over the years from their steam program. My first experience was chasing the 3985 into Las Vegas, Nevada in August of 2000. If I recall, this was a VIP trip for a political convention in Los Angeles. I expect UP wanted the diesel in the consist for several reasons. One, it would be additional horsepower to make sure the train could make track speed and stay out of the way of all those high priority freights. And second, they're trying to show off their railroad to a bunch of influential individuals and having a modern diesel better represents their true service. Let's face it, the steam engine gets attention, but diesels are what make the money. Now the following year, I again caught up to the 3985 at the NRHS annual convention in St. Louis, Missouri. Here we made a day trip to Gorham, Illinois without a diesel in sight. I don't know if they left it off all the way from Cheyenne, but for this day, it was steam only. In 2011, 844 made a visit to Arizona to celebrate Arizona's 100th birthday. Since it was traveling over the former Southern Pacific Sunset Route, UP added the Southern Pacific Heritage Unit to the consist. Again, this served multiple purposes, probably mostly to make sure the passenger special kept moving on schedule. But also, Phoenix is at the end of a dead-end branch line with no turning facilities. After displaying for a day in the yards, they used the diesel to pull the train back out of town to Picaccio before reassembling the consist and heading west to California. In 2019, Big Boy 4014 made its Southwest tour. Again, there was a modern diesel prominently displayed in the consist, presumably for backup power. Now, since then, 4014 has been equipped with PTC, or positive train control. As I understand it, the steam locomotive ties into the PTC on the trailing diesel. So in order to maintain PTC compliance, we may no longer be able to see a UP steam locomotive on the main line without diesel assist. Now, since I mentioned the 2001 NRHS convention, let's take a look at the other steam locomotive in attendance the Frisco 1522. It made two trips out of St. Louis. One was north to Hannibal, Missouri, the other southwest to Rolla, Missouri. Its train was made up of a collection of Amtrak certified private cars and was operated as an Amtrak charter train. These cars all required 480 volt head-end power and in typical Amtrak fashion was provided by a modern Amtrak Genesis unit. However, the 1522 team was able to put the diesel on the rear of the train so that it did not show up in the photos. It didn't appear that the diesel was there for much other than the HEP and to be a shoving platform during the backup moves for runbys and turning on the Y. The 2002 NRHS annual convention was held in Williams, Arizona and featured a train of privately owned passenger cars operated as an Amtrak charter headed by Santa Fe 3751 from Los Angeles to Williams and return. I was on the planning committee for that trip 
and we never even considered the idea that we would run without diesel assist. BNSF's Southern Transcon is one of the busiest pieces of railroad in the country, with an average of 80 trains a day. In order to sell the trip to the Class 1, we proposed having the Amtrak diesels on the train just in case something happened to the steam engine. BNSF is very comfortable working with Amtrak. The San Bernardino Historical Society in 3751? That's an unknown and a risk. And again, we needed the Amtrak engines to provide the HEP. When the train got to Grand Canyon Railway, we were able to move the diesels to the rear, allowing the 3751 to show off. However, the diesels were used quite a bit during switching operations while the 3751 was getting serviced or on display, and as additional horsepower on the 3% ruling grades. 3751 was able to make one trip to the Grand Canyon solo, but with only five cars on a special photo charter. Here on Grand Canyon Railway, many guests are surprised to see the diesel locomotive in the consist behind the steamer, thinking that the steam locomotive does not really work and is there just for show. This couldn't be farther from the truth. Now, we didn't always run with diesels in the consist. Back in the early days, when trains were only five or six cars, the little consolidations could handle the train by themselves, even on the 3% ruling grades. But as business picked up and trains got longer, the steam engine needed some help. At first, the diesel required a separate engineer, and he could double as the switch engineer when the steam engine was getting serviced. But around 1999, the railway acquired a multiple unit, or MU box, which allowed the steam engineer to control the trailing diesel as well. The steam engine can still run solo when the train consist warrants. For example, 4960 ran solo this past July for a special charter. <laughs> But when the regular passenger trains average 12 cars and 900 trailing tons, even a 3,000 horsepower F40 can't handle the train by itself. A normal train consist has two F40s at the head end. So on steam days, we simply replace one of the diesels with the steam engine on the point.
We've also discovered that the steam-diesel combination has some nice convenience from an operational standpoint. Steam engines produce their maximum power at speed, but are weak on tractive effort and can have a difficult time starting a train or running at slow speed. That's why many of the more modern engines work equipped with boosters to give them extra power when starting. A diesel, on the other hand, produces high tractive effort at slow speed, but the power curve drops off as the speed increases. There's an old adage here. A diesel locomotive can start a train that it can't pull, and a steam locomotive can pull any train that it can start. That's why steam locomotives are usually rated in tractive effort, while diesels are rated in horsepower. It's tractive effort that gets your train moving. Horsepower is what helps the train accelerate. Confused? Sounds like a topic for a future video. I hope this helps clear up some of the rumors behind steam diesel combinations on excursion trains. If you've got any other ideas, please let's discuss them in the comments.